after scientists realized the need to study elements and their properties and to group them uh, and classify them on the basis of similarity in their properties, many new scientists came up with different ways to classify elements, especially based on the classical concept of atomic mass. And one of the first attempts to classify elements on this classical concept was made by de Brenier. De Brenner. De Brenner, de Brenner's triads. And he basically came up with the concept of triads, right? And these are called de Brenner's triads and are one of the first major attempts to classify elements based on similarity in properties, right? So let's have a look at de Brenner's triads. Now, basically, a triad, what is a triad? A triad is a group of three. Okay, group of three. A group of three is called triad. So, Dobrenia arranged elements in groups of three, right? So, he took elements and he arranged them in groups of three. So, basically, what did he do? He took two ele uh, three elements. So, suppose, for example, there are three elements, A, B, and C. Suppose A, B, C are three elements. Okay, A, B, C are three random elements. Okay, so he took three elements, any three elements, and he arranged them in groups of three. He took elements and arranged them in groups of three in such a way, like for example, if this could be A, B, and C, suppose this was the order, and he took elements and he arranged them in groups of three in such a way that, in such a way that the atomic mass of B, the atomic mass of B, that is MB, here it means atomic mass of B. The atomic mass of B is equal to the average of the atomic mass of A and C. The average of the atomic mass of A and C. For example, MB will be equal to MA plus MC by 2. So, this was the basis of Dobrenius triads, that he arranged elements into groups of three in such a way that the mass of the middlemost element would be equal to the mass, uh, to the average of the mass of the other two elements. So, let's now put it into words. Now, Dobrenius triad, so triad law, or you can say triad rule. The triad rule was that, Elements were grouped, elements were grouped into triads, into triads in such a way that, in such a way that the mass of the middlemost element, mass of the middlemost element, would be the average of would be the average of the mass of the other two elements the mass of the other two elements so this was dobrenner's law triad rule or triad law dobrenner's triad law so, let's take examples now. So, we're going to take mainly two examples I'm going to consider, which are very prominent and major examples. The first example is lithium, sodium, and potassium. Lithium, sodium, and potassium. The mass of lithium is 6. Okay, this is the mass. So, I'm going to take this as mass. So, mass of lithium is 6. Mass of sodium is 23 and mass of potassium is 39. Okay, so 6, 23 and 39. Actually, it's not 6, sorry, it's 7. It's 7, okay. So 7, 23 and 39, right. Now, let's try to use the triad rule. So this was one of the triads made by Dobrina. And what did he do? Basically, he took, them ele took those elements. Now, let us see if, if it follows the rule. So, average of, average of mass of lithium and sodium, 
sorry lithium and potassium would be equal to 7 plus 39 by 2 okay obviously average is equal to the sum by the total number of observations so 7 plus 39 by 2 which is equal to 46 by 2 which is equal to 23 which is equal to the mass of sodium right so you can see that the mass of sodium that is 23 which is the middlemost element is equal to the average of the mass of the other two elements that is lithium and potassium right so i hope that's absolutely clear this is one very important example of Dobrina's triads right now let us move on to the next example next very prominent example which you're going to consider the example two which is chlorine bromine and iodine chlorine bromine and iodine the atomic mass of chlorine is 35.5 okay 35.5 the mass of bromine is 80 and the mass of iodine is 127. Okay, so 35.5, 80 and 127. So let us now have a look at the problem. So if you're going to take the average, so average of mass of chlorine and mass of iodine will be 35.5 plus 127 35.5 plus 127 by 2 right 35.5 plus 127 by 2 so this is approximately 81 actually it's not 80 exactly it can be 80 or it can be 81 or sometimes 82 let's let's consider it 82 here okay i think it's 82 i read it somewhere it's 80 so i don't know if it's right or not so, which is equal to 81.25. If you solve it, it comes out to be 81.25. So, approximately, we take it as 81. Let's take it as 81. So, it's you, you can understand the logic that it's pretty much very, very close. Now, it depends on the isotopes and there are different forms, right? So, basically, you can see it's pretty much similar, 81 and 81, right? So, this is another triad made by Dobrina. So, I hope you understand the triad law. That elements were grouped into groups of three. Okay, he took elements and arranged them in groups of three in such a way that the mass of the middlemost element would be equal to the average of the mass of the other two elements. So I hope that's absolutely clear. And this is a perfect representation of that. A, B, C, three elements, mass of B is equal to mass of A plus mass of C by two. Right? So this was Dobrina's, Dobrina's triad. Now the drawback. Okay, why wasn't it widely accepted? There is one major drawback of this, right? There was one major drawback of this. One major drawback. All elements, all elements could not be grouped into triads. So all elements could not be grouped into such triads. Not all elements could be grouped into such triads. Some did not follow this law at all. Hence, following a complete classification based on this rule, well, it wouldn't be that feasible because not elements could be grouped into such triads. Only a few could be done. And actually, to be honest, he could find only three to four triads. Not much, is it? So just three to four triads, not much. Hence, you can say that this, uh, you know, method was not so great or so effective. Hence, it was not widely accepted. But, no doubt, it helped in the initiation of the classification process and was one of the major steps, initial steps in uh, initiating the classification process. Moreover, if you see clearly, lithium, sodium, potassium and chlorine, bromine, iodine, in the modern periodic table, they are placed in the same group. So you can try to understand that again, to some extent, it was correct. And, you know, it was an idea which again found a relevance in modern forms of classification as well. So thank you very much. So that was all with Dobrina's triads.